Well, good night. It is Saturday night and we're going on a night tow. Uh, we're going to get a Jeep Compass or Patriot, one of the two. It doesn't matter, they're all the same. Uh, apparently the oil light came on and then it started smoking and then almost caught on fire, is what the lady said. So uh, she left it there, it's at one of the city park parking lots. Uh, she left it there, got a ride home with a friend and now we're gonna run over there and see if it is still there or if it caught on fire. And uh, if it's still there, we'll tow it back to her house for her. And if it caught on fire, we'll uh, probably take some pictures for Instagram and leave it there. So we're gonna run across town here and go see if we can find this thing and whether or not it's on fire and then uh, tow it to her house for her. So, Let's get going. All right, we are here at Riverbend Park. So it's a Jeep Patriot is what it is. And I don't know where it is. And I don't know what color it is, so I didn't think to ask that, which would have been smart, but oh well. There's Jeeps, but they are not Patriots. Nope, nope. What's over there? Here we go. That is a Jeep Patriot. So let's uh, make sure it's the right one and then we can get hooked up to it. So tell me your car's up for repo without telling me your car's up for repo. Good old tape over the VIN number trick. But uh, this is our car. I was able to still, even though they got it taped over here, down off the side, I can see underneath and see the last three digits of the VIN number. So. I know it's the right car, and also when the repo man finds it, he'll be able to see just the same. So that didn't really do him any good. But uh, this lady took the keys with her. I guess uh, she's she said, said she was sorry and apologized and all that, that when her friend came to pick her up, she didn't even think about the keys. She just locked it up and took them like she would any other time. And I told her that's no big deal. I don't need the keys. I, that's one more reason I like the wheel lift truck over rollback is this is an all wheel drive nosed in, front tires turned all the way, locked up, no keys, and it's not a problem because I'm using a wheel lift and dolly, it's not trying to pull it up on a rollback. So just one more reason I like the wheel lift truck better. So uh, we'll get backed up to it, uh, hooked all up to it with the wheel lift and the dollies, and then uh, get it out of here. Okay, let's get this thing loaded up. And while we're loading, we'll, uh, Talk about time, like speaking of rollbacks and wreckers and all that. Um, I've timed myself quite a bit with this wheel lift truck and with the roll rollback I had. Um, and I'm faster with the wheel lift. And I was talking with my man, Pat Caesar. I'll link his channel down here below. Um, definitely go check him out. Uh, he's doing his thing down in uh, uh, Florida does like a auto repair and towing type of stuff. Kind of a little bit of what I do too. And uh, we were talking about time since he runs a rollback, I run a wheel lift and timing ourselves. And what I said was, if you're timing things to go as fast as you can, you're doing it wrong. The time that matters is how quick it takes you when you're just going along at a normal pace kind of like what I'm doing now because that's how you're normally going to be working so that's what matters and just going at a normal pace doing it correctly like how fast you can get it on the truck and going doesn't matter unless it was a repo but in a normal tow like this you got to do it correctly um, safety chains tow lights uh, if you're on a rollback four separate tie down points all the way around 
uh, correctly. Same with unloading, correctly. And the time that matters is the time from when you get out of the truck, like I just did and start the camera, and until you are back in the truck, ready to roll down the road, correctly tied down, loaded, complete. That's the time that matters at a normal walking pace. Not as fast as you can get the car moving. Again, unless it's a repo. Um, but in that case, I am much faster with the wheel lift truck. Even in a case like this where I have to use dollies, and even in a case like this where I just put the dollies on wrong and have to redo it. Uh, so, even with the dollies, I'm faster with the wheel lift truck. When you go through the whole process, get out of the cab to get back in the cab. Uh, if it was a, a front wheel drive, sitting on the side of the highway or something like that, and it was just a pick it up, throw the front wheel straps on and go thing, I'd be even faster, faster in the wheel lift and the roll back because then you don't mess with any of this dolly stuff. It's literally just grab it, throw two straps on, two safety chains and down the road. So overall wheel lift is faster, just hands down. And again, with what I do, doing one or two toes a day at most, speed is not super important, but I mean, it is still something you think about. It still is something that matters. So just one more reason. Oh, I forgot the safety locks here. It wasn't ratcheting as I was lifting. I'll set this one. See, you get to talk in on the camera, not paying attention and forget stuff. So now the, the whole car is picked up. If we had to get out of here right now, I could. Everything's off the ground. And, um, I don't know what we're at time-wise right now. Where did I put that strap? Oh, here it is. But speaking of doing things fast, more importantly than hustling around and trying to go as quick as you can and all that stuff, I think is just being efficient. So that was four minutes at just a normal casual walking pace to the point where I could drive out of here four minutes it's pretty quick but since we're doing this correctly we're gonna strap all four wheels down put our safety chains on and all that stuff but as I was saying efficiency is the biggest thing to being quick not moving quick so this truck I think I have it pretty well laid out for me doing this type of stuff. Um, see, the both wheel straps for this side are sitting right on this side, right there where I just grabbed this one from. Um, the wheel strap and the dolly strap. So there's no digging them out of anywhere or anything like that. They're sitting side by side, ready to go. If I need both, they're both right there. If I only need the wheel strap, just grab the wheel strap. And then uh, the tow light sitting right here as well. Quick and easy to grab. It's already on the car. Now we'll throw this dolly strap on. But same thing, the straps are all set up, ready to go. The dollies themselves, uh, the crossbars are both on the passenger side of the truck over there. That way if you're on the side of the road, you're not pulling those big long bars out and swinging them around with live traffic going next to you and one, risking getting hit yourself and two, risking swinging that big long bar out and clipping a car as it goes by because that probably wouldn't end well for you. So that's why both of the dolly bars are on this side over here. Um, the dollies themselves sit right on the back on each side. It's grab it right here at waist level or it's easy to pick, carry them back and set them down. And then the, the breakover bar goes on this side as well for the same reason as the actual dolly crossbars. It makes it so everything that you're doing when you're swinging that bar around is not on the side that traffic's usually on. I know a lot of guys put one of the crossbars on each side and I mean for some space reasons as far as how you're laying out your truck I get that but I don't like 
grabbing those bars and messing with those on the traffic side of the truck. So I don't. Then like I said the other wheel strap right there, easy to grab, no digging out anything. Um, the only thing I don't have laid out super good is my um, safety chain straps. I use those endless loops and go to the actual control arms or whatever under the car and then hook the chains to that. So I'm not hooking chains to the customer's car, only soft objects like straps and those round sling endless loops. And uh, since I'm doing this right here, this uh, turn tire thing that you can't see because you're up there. Wheels turn don't matter with dollies. You just set the dollies a little tighter and everything's fine. So these I just kind of have sitting in the back of the truck right here behind the winch. I don't have like a special place for them, but still works, still quick to grab. And I can throw them around the I got my glove stuck on there. Around the control arm. Grab the safety chain right here, quick and easy. Grab the other one around the control arm. And same thing, just pull this out. And adjust the length and good to go. And that's it, this thing is loaded. Uh, all four wheels tied down, safety chains on, and tow light bar on, and we are at, uh, let's say, eight minutes. Taking our sweet time and uh, talking to the camera along the way, uh, just at a normal, easy pace. Uh, with a rollback, pulling the winch bridle out, uh, crawling, it's other thing, you have to crawl under the car and get on the ground to hook up underneath. Because uh, on most newer cars, you can't just J-hook a control arm from outside you actually have to crawl under and use one of the slots. So by the time you pull the bridle out, well, roll the bed back for one, that's not quick, pull the bridle out, get under the car, hook up to it, winch it on, put four separate straps all the way on it, roll the bed back up. We're probably really close to the same time, um, but I would much prefer wheel lift, because like I said, if this wasn't an all-wheel drive and didn't need the, uh, dollies check that out i got a light this would have been a way quicker ordeal but that was the whole load up from beginning to end taking my sweet time talking to you guys the whole time and it took eight minutes so uh, let's get this thing fired up and head to this lady's house okay we are here and it's got to go in this space right off the side over there so we're gonna pull these safety chains off before we turn real sharp to get in there. Throw these right back up here because I don't have a super cool spot for them. And then there's a road over here. So I think I'll back up, pull over there and then back into this space. And see if that works. So. It's gotta go in space number two. Hint, hint, Mr. Repo Man. What's funny, I do know the repo guy for this area, and what's funny is our trucks are basically twins, so everybody thinks I'm the repo guy. Um, they're both the same Ford Race Red or whatever it is, super bright red, uh, extended cab Fords with black tinted out windows. Uh, the only difference is his is um, a 2020 and mine's a 1999. So his is uh, 21 years newer than mine. But since mine has this whole upgraded front end on it, uh, it looks like the newer ones and it gets confused for him a lot. So let's see if we can spin this thing somewhat into the spot. Get out and see if that's close enough. And it is right in the middle of the space. So that's what we'll go with. All right, where did I put my gloves? 
See, I'd make a terrible repo guy. All right. So we can now shut the truck off, turn our lights back on, and then adjust you guys a little bit. Okay, so it is now at two minutes and 30 seconds when we start our unload. And we're kind of cheating because we already have the safety chains off. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, I get mistaken for the repo guy all the time because our trucks look identical to the untrained eye. So, um, oops, sorry. But yeah, that's why I got the tape on the license plate there. I'm not trying to put anyone's uh, business out there. So we'll pull the wheel straps off. And you see they just go right here nice and easy. Dolly straps nice and easy. And while we're here, we open up our dolly mounts. So they're ready to go. And then when we walk around the vehicle, we grab our tow light so we don't forget it. And it sits right here on the side of this box so that I can look in my mirror and see it and know that I forgot it. So make sure we wheel us out far enough, all that's off. Bumpers clear of the curb in the front and we can drop the dollies. We start on that side and then go to this side. And I know that looks super rough and all, but these tires were all of four inches off the ground. So if you've ever driven your car off of the curb, you've dropped it from higher than that. So it doesn't hurt it. Dollies drop right into their spots. Come to the other side to get the other one. And yes, I will do a video here real soon of how the dollies work in an actual step-by-step -step process of them, basically. My little home-built latch is still working great. Then we come to this, back to this side so we can kick the dolly bars out off the tires as we walk by. Slide one out. Put it in its spot. Slide the other. Put it in its spot. Flip the latches over. Put the dolly bar on. This strap is always mounted on the one end so it's quick to hook on the other. Now we can set this thing down. Oh, and while we're talking about speed difference of rollback versus wrecker, keep in mind, this thing is doors locked, no keys, in park, steering wheel turned all the way. So on this wheel lift truck, that makes no difference at all. On a rollback, that adds a significant amount of time to your load up. So this is not your normal quick roll it right on the rollback because to put a neutral so it could roll, you would have to unlock the door, which takes time by the time you get your lockout kit and spend 30 seconds unlocking the door, put your lockout kit away, then you'd have to pop the neutral release. There's another 30 seconds to a minute added on there. So you've got another few minutes at least doing that, or you could skate it, which I've done a video on skating a car up the rollback bed. I'll, I'll put a link to that down below too. And uh, you could skate it, but then you got to get out your skates, get out your hammer, Put all your skates in place get hooked onto it real good and drag it up and then the big part is you have to skate it off which that was in that video too so you'll see that part as well if you go watch that video and it adds a very significant amount of time so yeah wheel lift truck is just faster and easier all the way around unless you get some mangled wreck that's a total mess but they're towable on this but then it is easier on a rollback. So that is 
whole car undone, untied, sitting on the ground, wheel lifters retracted and folded up and done. We're finished. Pictures taken and everything, and it is now seven minutes and 20 seconds. So what is that? We're at 2.30. So uh, five minutes from get out of the cab to get back in the cab to drive away. Done and finished. So again, faster than the rollback, especially in this case where you would have to skate the car off. And like I said, you can unlock it, do the neutral release and all that to get it out of there. But remember, the wheels are turned and there is no steering wheel lock release. So in this case, you're better off to leave it all locked up in gear and everything because with the skates, it'll slide straight. If you do the neutral release so that it rolls, it's gonna to try to turn and it won't go up your bed. So yeah, wheel of truck, way easier. All right, let's uh, get out of here. Oh, dang, speed bumps. All right, we are headed out of this uh, apartment complex. And speaking of the whole repo guy thing, that just reminded me, um, you guys know this truck is for sale. And I just mentioned how much I get mistaken for the repo guy in this truck because it looks exactly like his truck. Um, but I'm about to get mistaken for the repo guy a whole lot more. Um, you know this truck's for sale, which means obviously something has to replace it. And that something is on its way to my house right now. And uh, should be here today, Saturday. Should be here Monday. And... Uh, can't wait to show you guys what it is. I think you're really gonna like it. Uh, I hope I'm really gonna like it. <laughs> and, uh, as long as nothing happens to it on the way here. Uh, yeah, Monday, I think we should be able to make a nice little video and show you the replacement for this truck, which has done me amazingly well. And uh, I still on the fence about selling it. So we'll see what happens. I don't know. If someone makes me the right offer, yes, it'll go, but it doesn't have to, so yeah. Well, anyway, that's enough of a hint for now, and that's enough of a tow for now. So I'm gonna go home because it's Saturday night, and that's where I'd rather be. And uh, that'll be it for this video. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys explained, not explained it, enjoyed it, and liked all my explanation ramblings that uh, went along with it. And we'll see you guys next time.